that can lower your risk of breast cancer and lymphomas. And it seemed to take at least the word, it's cancer. No one wants to hear this. What's even worse are the words, there is nothing more that we can do for you. My grandmother had a brain tumor and her neurosurgeons tried to take it out, but she never survived the surgery. My best friend had breast cancer twice. Her mother-in-law died of metastatic breast cancer. My friend at church, her husband died of esophageal cancer. Another friend of mine, her mother-in-law died of pancreatic cancer. Another friend of mine, her husband, had colon cancer. And then I had another friend whose daughter, 25-year-old daughter, got metastatic lung cancer and she's never smoked. I can go on and on about personal stories of people I know who have been touched by cancer. And I'm sure you can too. Living in America, if you're a man, you have a one in three lifetime rate of getting cancer. And if you're a woman, you have a one in four lifetime rate of getting cancer. If you had those chances of winning the lotto, wouldn't you buy a lottery ticket? I would buy thousands. But this also means two out of three men and three out of four men won't get cancer. Cancer is not inevitable. Not everybody gets cancer. It's not a rite of passage. So what are those people doing right? Because if you do the right things, you can reduce your risk of developing cancer by 40%. Number one is to eat foods that are naturally green. Don't eat green food coloring, but foods that contain chlorophyll, which is a plant's mitochondria. And this is why you need to optimize your immunity to defend your body. By eating naturally dark green chlorophyll rich foods, you could reduce your risk of liver cancer by 55% as shown in this study. Chlorophyll, like I said, is a unique molecule because it can harness energy from the sun. Literally the sun gives a plant immunity and we are borrowing the plant's immune system when we eat chlorophyll rich foods. You know, young people seem to take a lot of risks. I used to work in a lab with a graduate student who was so proud he could stomach anything. So he ate moldy food. In fact, if his bread went moldy, he didn't even take the mold out. He would just eat the bread as is. And sometimes he would toast it thinking that it would kill the toxins, but he doesn't kill the alpha toxins. And you may feel all right in the short term, but in the long term, alpha toxins accumulate and they are potent carcinogens. They are known to cause liver cancers. Old grains and old nuts, they can easily grow mold that makes a mycotoxin called alpha toxin. Cereals, breads, pastries, granola bars, they are known to contain mold. And of course, the poison is in the dose. If you're trying to avoid alpha toxins and avoiding plants in general, just know that corn and the other grains fed to farm animals are known to have hundreds of times more alpha toxin contamination. So when you eat that animal, you're in fact exposed to the same toxins they were exposed to. And it's super concentrated in organ meats. But it's not just organ meats. These metabolites can also be found in the animal's milk, dairy. There's over 20 different types of alpha toxins with alpha toxin B1 being the most prevalent and potent carcinogen. And that's the thing with cancer. What you do today, can it potentially affect you 10, 20, 30 years from now? It's like saving up for retirement. The money you put in today, if you invest it right, will grow due to compound interest. From now, when you retire, you will have exponential growth of your money. Unfortunately, the effects of toxins work opposite and they drain your health assets. So let's not end up several decades later poorer in our health in a doctor's office anxiously waiting for bad news. Now, I once bought shell peanuts and noticed that the shell was black. That's mold. These molds, they grow in warm and humid environments and contaminate the crops grown there before and after harvesting and during storage. And this is why you don't want to store grains and nuts too long. This is also why I avoid buying grains and nuts from warm and humid countries whenever possible. Somebody commented that they stopped eating peanuts because I said it had germs. And to be clear, all food have germs. So this is why we have to clean our food. Your air has germs. In fact, there's germs in your house. Mold is everywhere, especially in moist environments. And as long as you have a competent immune system, low doses of these germs, they're usually fine. Your immune system will protect you from these tiny amounts of common germs. But massive collections of germs, like colonies of germs, that's different. And don't forget, between washing your food 
and putting heat and cooking it, you can kill a lot of germs. But unfortunately, germs make toxins. And oftentimes these toxins are not destroyed by heat. Have you heard about the recent recalls of deli meats due to bacteria? Well, cured meats pose multiple dangers, but they can also be contaminated with alpha toxins. Now, to be clear, only certain molds produce alpha toxins, like Aspergillus flavus and Aspergillus parasiticus, which commonly contaminate food crops such as peanuts, corn, cottonseed, and tree nuts. This means if you eat nut butters, there could be alpha toxin in your nut butter. And because of that, I rarely eat pre-made nut butters. Honestly, I'm not a nut butter fan. There are more than 450 different known types of mycotoxins and their metabolites associated with toxic effects of varying severities and degrees spanning from mild gut inflammation to deadly cancers. Now, African nations and Asian nations historically have the highest incidence of contaminated agricultural products, and this parallels higher cases of hepatocellular cancer in those areas. Now remember, mold is in your house and it's also on your food. That fuzzy gray spot on your bread and fruit, that's aspergillus. Now remember, you may have perfectly normal labs and end up with cancer. But if you have abnormal labs, that just increases your risk of getting cancer. Cancer is an immunity and metabolism problem. Abnormal cholesterol levels, abnormal sugar levels, abnormal inflammatory markers, these are all immunity and metabolism problems. Hepatocellular or liver cancer is the sixth most common cancer diagnosed and the third leading cause of cancer-related death. Here are some common symptoms of hepatocellular or liver cancer. And here are some risk factors to developing liver cancer. If you are over 18, make sure you have a hepatitis C virus antibody screen. We literally have very good cures now for most hepatitis C viruses. And unlike 20 years ago, the treatment is short and very tolerable. Of course, it's best to reduce your aflatoxin exposure by buying only major commercial labels of nuts and nut butters and by discarding nuts that look moldy, discolored, or shriveled. In 1968, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration began testing foods that may contain alphalotoxins, such as peanuts and peanut butter. But they can't sample everything. And did you know it's actually not required by law to test any foods for alphalotoxins? But I have to give the FDA credit for this. At least they're trying, and they're apparently doing a pretty good job because America is one of the largest consumers of nut butters, and we have one of the lowest rates of liver cancer. In reality, it's impossible to completely avoid mold exposure in your daily life, as it's in every food that you eat and the air that you breathe. But the sun also helps you directly by stimulating the production of two critical immunity hormones called vitamin D and melatonin. They, too, can help you fight cancer. And this is why number two it's very important for you to get some early morning sunlight before 10 o'clock or late sunlight after 4 p.m. There's a fine line between a little sunlight to stimulate vitamin D and getting x-rayed in the sun and sunburned. Now, I'm always checking people for rashes before I prescribe any antibiotics since antibiotics can give people rashes. And I'm so surprised that so many people get sunburned and they don't really care about it. Oftentimes, they don't even notice it. And I can tell it's a sunburn because it follows the outline of their shirt. Please don't let this happen to you. Getting red from the sun is not healthy. So number three, avoid getting sunburn. Getting sunburn is an immunosuppressive act that can cause cancer. And in fact, children who get sunburned have a higher rate of getting melanomas as adults. Don't just protect your children from the sun, protect them from tanning salons. Excessive sunlight or radiation of any sort is the number one cause of skin aging. It's basically the UV damaging rays that every dermatologist wants you to use sunblock to prevent these UV rays. Sunblocks by themselves have a whole host of issues as well. If you want to learn more about sunblocks, let me know in the comments. In general, it's not good to spend hours in the sun unless you're a plant. And I know your kids, they love to play outside. You know, my kids, they always make a big deal about their chores. They always feel like they've done more than their fair share of chores. And they seem to have the same attitude when it comes to eating greens. They always think they've eaten more than enough leafy green vegetables. And as a mom, there's no limit to chores or leafy greens, and they never do enough of either. Now, in reality, how much leafy greens do you eat? Because you are their role model. I would recommend aiming for five cups, which can get you 100 grams of chlorophyll. And 
I know it's hard because I too struggle with eating my greens. So I basically blend two cups of kale with blueberries every day. I drink that, my family drinks that, so we get two cups each of green vegetables every time we eat a smoothie. Even kale juice is beneficial. And I used to juice that for years because my kids didn't like the smoothie texture. But honestly, juicing, that takes a lot of work. And finding that juicer wasn't always easy because a lot of juicers, they seem to waste a lot of product. Kale is my favorite cruciferous vegetable. All of them have glucoraphanins that get converted to sulforaphanes when you chop it up. And sulforaphanes, that can lower your risk of breast cancer and lymphomas. And it seemed to take at least five servings a week, which is really not that much. Literally dripping raw kale juice killed cancer cells. But good luck if you want to wait for an IV drip. In the meantime, I'm just going to eat this stuff. Cancer has no borders. It doesn't matter if you're famous, rich, or royal. We all bleed the same red blood, breathe the same polluted air, but we don't eat the same foods. Now, when I grew up, that was like the anti-tobacco era. Remember the great American smokeout in the 1970s? It took over 30 years for smoking rates to go down since a declaration by the U.S. Surgeon General to tell the nation that smoking was bad. At one time, everybody smoked, including doctors. Now, every Surgeon General after that has talked about the negative effects of smoking. So if we've reduced smoking so much, then how come... Young people are getting cancers in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. Princess Catherine, who is only in her early 40s, has cancer. But it took Prince Charles 75 years to get cancer. Why are cancer rates increasing even though smoking is down? Maybe it's our food. Maybe the toxins in our food. Or maybe we're not eating enough of the antidote. And our food is even less nutritious, so we have to seek out the right foods and eat enough of them. Now, we used to think cancer was a disease of aging, old people disease, right? But I know plenty of old people who don't have cancer. And I also know plenty of young people who have cancer. Now, it's really not your chronological age that determines your biological age. Your biological age is really determined by your immune and metabolic age. There is a condition called progeria in which children have an accelerated metabolic age. A child with progeria who is 10 years old chronologically might have a metabolic age that resembles more of a 70-year-old. Now, this is an extreme case of accelerated metabolic aging, but this is what is happening to everyone who has a chronic metabolic condition. They are accelerating their metabolic age. And the thing with chronic metabolic conditions is most of them are the result of lifestyle choices. And even if they're genetic, there's no condition that cannot be improved with better lifestyle choices. So if you have a chronic metabolic condition, then it's really up to you to fix your lifestyle. Unfortunately, our drugs, they're often just a band-aid and they enable people to continue poor lifestyle choices, which is often the root cause of these metabolic problems. But the reality is for most people, it's probably a variety of different repeat insults that suppresses the immune system, ruining the metabolic system. And no one argues that alpha toxin, tobacco smoke, heavy metal, and asbestos are all carcinogenic. Now we've made strict regulations against asbestos, have some regulations against tobacco smoke, but we allow heavy metals to taint our chocolate and arsenic to be in our baby food. Come on people, how is this logical? And the thing is, I fed my kids the same kind of food. And it's in all of our best interests to avoid foods high in heavy metals and arsenic, which is number five. Now, do you like fermented foods? There is this health trend with fermented foods has taken over the internet. It's like it's a new food group. But people have been eating fermented foods forever because they didn't have refrigerators in the old days. But you know what my dad told me when I was a kid? He told me not to eat fermented foods. He didn't think they were healthy. I used to eat a thousand year old eggs. I thought they were delicious. Well, those eggs were high in sodium. They're high in ammonia because that's what gives it its unique flavor. They also add preservatives and they could be contaminated with bacteria. Now, does that sound like a health food to you? My mom, she used to make pickled vegetables and my dad would never eat them. In fact, he always gave me a lecture about food poisoning. And my mom, she had high blood pressure. You know how much salt is in pickled vegetables? And in general, salted fermented foods are associated with a higher rate of gastric cancer. Here are other risk factors for gastric cancer. Now I figure instead of eating food that's been fermented by people to turn into alcohol, 
How about I just allow my own gut microbes to ferment my food by giving it fiber? So I avoid salted fermented foods, which is number six. And that alcohol is definitely also not good to swallow. That's number seven, avoid it. So many famous women have been diagnosed with breast cancer now. It seems like every other day, there's some famous celebrity that's been diagnosed with breast cancer and they're on TV. And I applaud them for having the courage to share their journey with us. And they advocate for early screening. But unfortunately, early screening hasn't made much of a difference in breast cancer rates. As a woman, my goal isn't to get screened for cancer. My goal is not to get cancer. And the best thing that survivors of breast cancer can do for their fellow women is to advocate an abstinence from alcohol. In fact, alcohol is not good for anybody. I use alcohol to kill germs. I actually use it as a bug spray. And it baffles me why people won't eat whole foods from the dirty dozen because it has pesticides, and but they're willing to chug down a toxin with fancy meals. Alcohol is a fermentation byproduct of sugar. Literally, it's a waste product that's toxic to the germs and they've thrown it out. I guess it's true, one person's trash is another person's treasure. Alcohol doubles your risk of breast cancer. Now, everybody has breasts both men and women, unless it's been taken out. But alcohol also causes cancer in your mouth, in your stomach, in your intestine, and in your liver. Basically, everything it touches, you can get cancer. It also makes you vitamin deficient, especially vitamin B1, which is super important for your metabolism, your immunity, and your brain. Alcohol literally interferes with the absorption of thiamine in the gastrointestinal tract, and then it makes you pee out more thiamine in your urine. And then on top of that, many people who drink alcohol, they don't eat nutritious foods. And then when they're sober, they eat number eight, red meat. I used to eat red meat and I was a big fan of Korean barbecue. Did you know that South Korea has the highest rates of colon cancer amongst the Asian nations? They eat a ton of red meat. And it's interesting how a tiny little place like South Korea can have access to so much red meat. The World Health Organization they have classified beef as a carcinogen due to its nitrates and heme iron concentration. Both of them are known carcinogens. Now, when heme is in the wrong place, it's literally very toxic. And that's how chloroquine kills malaria parasites. In case you didn't know, when a mosquito with malaria bites you, they spill malaria into your bloodstream. Then malaria goes and infects in your red blood cells. And usually it survives in the red blood cells, even though it's full of heme because it's able to detoxify heme. But chloroquine prevents malaria from detoxifying heme. So there's a heme buildup and then the malaria parasites die. And when you're ingesting these molecules, you are ingesting harmful toxins that hurt your mucosa. That's why I'm not so sure those veggie burgers made out of heme protein, it's gonna pan out in the long run. In general, avoid processed meats and processed veggie patties, which is number nine. Deli meats also have preservatives like nitrates. Nitrates react to proteins to become nitrosamines, which are cancerous to your tissues, especially in your stomach and colon. And high level of nitrates they can lead to methemoglobinemia, which is a condition where oxygen delivery to tissues are impaired. When you don't get oxygen, you turn blue. And when babies don't get oxygen, that's called a blue baby syndrome. Now, nitrites can also be found in your water due to fertilizer runoff. That's why number 10, it's important to get a water filter. You won't believe the amount of toxins in water. And if you wanna learn more about that and which filter I use, watch the next video.